And I'm hoping you could tell us a little bit more about you and your musical journey and what role does music and art play in your advocacy? So music has always been a really great, big part of my life. I grew up in a, a family that really, really loved music and there was always something playing. Uh, so I kind of just grew up singing along to everything. And um, my mom always said that I was, I was singing songs before I could talk. So that's always been a big part of my identity. As I got older and I started to experience what I, what I now know is anxiety, music sort of became a way for me to communicate with people when I felt like I couldn't in my day-to-day -day life. I had trouble voicing how I was feeling about things. So music kind of became a way for me to, to connect with people, listening to songs that were written by other people who were clearly uh, sharing the same experience as I was, how much that helped me. So music kind of became my way to, uh, to start larger conversations in my community. That's awesome. Can you tell us a little bit more about the first song you're going to be playing for us? Sure, sure. It's a tune off my uh, first record, which just came out in March. So this is a song called More Than My Heart. If I could twist your arm, stand the floor like a, like a tourniquet. I'd take the red, paint it something fresh, make it something less right. If my arms could reach that far, they'd wrap around us both. Sweetheart, I would hold you. If I had a choice, or if I could choose for you, don't you think I would? Don't you know I adore you? There's a desperate I think this song was a great way to start this night. And I think the message from this song is definitely one that many of us can relate to through our different experiences. And speaking about experiences, Brielle, just based on your experiences, how could the education system better support youth in taking care of themselves and also discovering and pursuing their true passions? the education system in itself was designed, I feel like it puts so much pressure on kids to know what they want to be so early on in life. And it, it leaves no room for, for change later down the road. It was sort of ingrained in me in the school system that you do really well in school and then you go to university, you do really well in university, uh, you graduate with a degree, you get a good job, you start making money. That's just how it worked in my brain. And I could feel myself kind of fighting that um, and wanting to be more and more in the arts, but it took me a really long time to come to terms with that because it felt like it just wasn't an option, like it was going to be this enormous scandal if I chose to do something else. I think the education system definitely needs to be tailored more to individuals because I, I feel like the, the system was designed so long ago and it hasn't adapted to how people and how children grow. We've learned so much about how the brain works and what it needs to thrive. And I don't think the school system has kept up with that. I think opening up some flexibility for that for kids would, would go a long way. What is the next song that you're going to perform? The next one that I've got on my list is, uh, I hope my parents are tuned in because it's one of their favorites. <laughs> it's one that I wrote. It started out just as a simple song about coal miners because I it was just kind of astonishing to me that there's still people who are who mine for a living, who risk their lives like that every day just to get by. But as I wrote it, it kind of took on a life of its own and became sort of a metaphor for that fear that um, struggling with your mental health gives you sometimes that it will keep you from having um, 
really beneficial, meaningful relationships in your life. I know I've struggled a lot with romance and with friendships alike because my mental health uh, or lack thereof occupied so much space in my brain. So I felt very distanced from everybody. So uh, it's a song called Lover's Coal. Sing me a song of the home I knew Hills of emerald green Dreamt of eyes that were clear and blue Sight never more I'll see Here I stay within A mountain swallowed me And it grinned That's so good, Braille. Thank you so much. Um, this is awesome. I've been listening to your music on Spotify all day, just preparing for this. So it's cool to have the live experience. It's awesome. Um, but yeah, I guess a little bit more about you. So whenever we first chatted, um, you talked a lot about growing up super involved in extracurricular activities, just being a super high achiever, perfectionist, um, and how it not only contributed to the stress and pressure for you, but Kind of acted as a barrier for you seeking help which i think a lot of us have run into just i'm thinking of like the network reps and just mental health advocates in general where we're really passionate about what we're doing but we also have a lot of other things on our plates and trying to be mindful of burnout and stuff like that too which i think a lot of us have faced so i guess what would you say to people regarding the pressure to meet expectations that might not be what's best for them i find that a continuous hard question to answer for myself. Um, I do think it's, you know, it's in the, in the nature of people who want to help other people um, who have that sort of overly empathetic side to want to give too much all the time and to, to have that, uh, that fear of disappointment. Um, what I've realized through my own journey is that nobody else's expectations are anywhere close as high as my own are for myself. So I've been a lot happier having come to terms with the fact that I don't have to expect as much from myself. You know, having that experience of being involved in so much through school and, and uh, thinking that it all mattered so much that the world was going to fall apart if I let this one, this one thing drop. It just is not, it's not true at all. <laughs> and I've realized, uh, especially if you surround yourself with a team that you can trust and who, who know you and who read you really well, when you have to let something drop, you have some, somebody there who's ready to catch it. 
So in terms of, of meeting other people's expectations, I think a, they're not as high as you think they are. And B, you have people in your, in your life who are willing and ready and enthusiastic about helping you meet those expectations if that's what you want. That's huge. Yeah, that's a big realization I've made recently too, but I think you bring it to light really well. So thank you for that. Um, but yeah, I guess moving on, I'm excited to hear a little bit more about the next song that you're going to be playing for us. The next song is going to be the first single off of my next album. The whole album really is about sort of my journey through mental health and how that influenced my art and who I am as a, as a human and how they work together a lot of the time. So it's a song called 25. I won't lie to you, it's not always sweet, sleep inside white, while the world steals the sheets, but I am learning to curve my eye to suicidal ideation, 25. Wow, that was just amazing. We've got some questions from the audience. So the first one is, uh, who inspires you to keep singing and to keep talking about mental health? I think in particular, a big dam opening up for me and being more vocal about my mental health was deciding to start speaking more honestly with my mom about it. I had, when I was in a really low place, I had a conversation with her. This was uh, last fall. And she's the one who kind of helped set things in motion. And I think I was very worried about what her reaction would be, but she then began to open up about her own experiences and uh, it instantly became easier to share once that door was open. And the effort that it took to open the door was more effort than it took to just keep walking through it now that it's open. So I think, yeah, my, my mom has been a big influence in that. What motivates you to write music? I think it fluctuates for sure. I think now that I'm more practiced at it, I have a bigger uh, sort of tool belt when it comes to getting inspired to write things. Um, it definitely developed as, I think, a coping mechanism for anxiety and uh, what has now been diagnosed as dysthymia, which is just sort of a low grade depression that I've had uh, forever, pretty much. Um, so music started as a way to get those feelings out and to try to make sense of them. Cause I, I, I could sense that there was something not settling well with how I felt about myself and about the world. And writing music kind of gave me this, this little uh, glimpse of a bird's eye view where I could sort of peer into my own state of mind and sort of compare it to how I thought the world 
worked or how I wanted the world to be. So I think that that continues to motivate me quite a lot because it's still uh, it's still quite a personal experience for me. That's awesome. Um, one thing I really love that you've been bringing up and everything you've mentioned is just like how you noticed, I guess, since you started opening up to folks and your mom in particular about your mental health, how open people were with you. And it seems like just from getting to know you through this, you're a really open and authentic person. And I think someone that people would easily approach when they want to open up about their mental health. And so something we talk about at Jack.org a lot is not only, not only being there for ourselves, but being there for others. So I guess like what's one tip that you would give for folks on how to be there for others? One of the most important things is just listening without judgment, listening with curiosity and meeting someone on their level and, and, and knowing that it's not all on you to fix them. Um, when someone comes to you with something, they're not necessarily looking for a magic wand that will solve all their problems. They just need somebody to know what they're going through and they need help opening that door. They need the confidence to, to reach out to that person in their lives that, that they need to go to. Maybe they're having trouble making a doctor's appointment. Maybe they have a family doctor that they would love to, to talk to. So it's, I think it's important to listen and not not assume that their problems are now your problems because if you keep sort of centered and and grounded yourself you'll be uh, much more capable of being able to help them 